guy who presents with a road traffic accident, open distributed fracture, debridement with external fixation with flap was done somewhere else. He has a common peroneal nerve palsy. Pulses were fortunately okay and there was an external fixator which was removed after four weeks. And this is how the patient presented to us. Okay. So these are the x-rays and you see that essentially this is a segmented tibial fracture with loss of the entire pylon. So there is no actual point remaining here. So any thoughts or something? Or I know of course this is a good case to be managed by Elizera, but any alternative thoughts? People who would not do an Elizera, how you would manage this? Anybody in the audience just call Elizera or any career? You already mentioned in your title what? Yeah, yeah, because Dr. Manish Dhawan sir was very particular about title nature. <laughs> so, okay, because at, at one conference where I presented, I was told to ask Elizera, why did you do an Elizera? Okay, so, all right, so here are the problems. So, there is practically no ankle joint, there is only medial malleolus and lateral malleolus. There is the talus, those are the fragments, and that was the plan. So plan was of course a bone transport over a nail. Why a nail? Because once you have completed everything, the nail remains in C2. You can cut down the time in the external fixator. Right? So we plan to dock the middle segment, do a proximal corticotomy and bring the whole thing down. And then because there is no ankle joint, you also want to fuse the ankle joint. There is no other way. <coughs> so which is what was done. So this was a hind foot nail which was put in, corticotomy, distraction going on. Of course when you do this there are some skin vagination inside issues, they all crop up but they can be managed. So nearing the end of the bone transport an anterior approach was done, bone grafting was done, stimulan was put in because there was a lot of, lot of bone void and this is at one and a half years of follow up. Right? That is his function. This is how the patient works. And this is what I presented in another conference where I was told why did you do an Elizera? You could have put in a bone graft, you could have done n number of things. So any thoughts or comments up till here? Elizera is the best. Elizera is the best. No, but I was also told that you could add this So you could have put any comments on the x-rays, are you happy? Because uh, we go to a lot of conferences where we see two cortex union, three cortex union, everybody is saying it united, patient is walking, somebody is hunky dory and then four months later this happens. In a patient where we thought, um, the patient also thought it was united. Patient by the way is a very intelligent mechanical engineer with good function, which was presented by me in a conference, shown as a good result. And then this happens four months after I thought that it had been So the nail has broken. There is also some gap here with a dicey sort of situation. So now my question is, what will you do? It is very easy to show x-rays, say that everything is good, show the patient walking around. And then, but what do you do in your real life when your patient comes like this? Any takers from the audience? Remove the implant and put the laser on the implant. Laser on another thing. So you thought that this is a residual infection? Usually it is infection. Usually infection, okay. So sir is very right. That was the first thing that we came to our mind. It could be a residual infection. Patient did not have any signs of infection. But we did a complete workup, we did a blood workup, we also did some bone scans. There were no cultures to be taken because there was no wound, but it was essentially all okay. ESR normal, CRP normal, nothing going on, the implant has broken. So you need to do a revision fixation, right? So why, why did it happen? So the question we need to really ask, why? Was it really united when we thought that it is united? Yes, so I would argue sir that one, two and three cortices may be united. So sometimes, and this is very objective, right? You want to say that it is a three cortex union, but probably yes, 
there is maybe some soft tissue in between, even though I had done an open reduction there, put in a bone graft, freshen the bone ends, put in stimuli, abyssal other gag. But we have to, you know, sir said, Dr. Jitin, to bite the bullet. Maybe it is not united, right? Where is the other problem also, right? People always have a little bit of a physiological valgus in their heel, right? And when you start putting a straight implant in a physiological valgus, it can sometimes create problems, right? So this is one of them. This is not the patient's foot. This is just to show you. But most people have varying degrees of a physiological heel valgus. So if you put a straight nail in a person with a hind foot valgus, and the nail is always tending to then fail into valgus. So I think it was a combination of poor biology at that side, maybe not complete union, and the fact that we put a straight nail there. So bad biology, bad myomechanics maybe led to this failure. So to address this, we have to address the biology. We also have to address the mechanics. And you can address the mechanics if you put in a valgus bent nail. Of course, you can also repeat this with an elizera taking into account. But mind you, the ankle and subtalar joint, you know, they have become one block. The subtalar joint was already starting to fuse and it had become very stiff. So we had to take out that nail, do a revision nailing, put in bone graft again, and in this time we chose a nail with a physiological valgus bent. Right. And now it looks completely united. This is six months later. Patient is still walking, has no problems, but they are still under follow up. So this is the end of the case. The message that I want to give out here is very clear. You need to follow up your cases very, very meticulously. We want to believe that it has united, but long term follow up is the most, most important thing. And whenever you are faced with a non-union or a complication, so you have to think in terms of patient factors, biology, as well as mechanics of the whole concept. Thank you.